When my wife was pregnant, she had ultrasound scans. That is not my wife, by the way. You can't film inside NHS hospitals, so that is stock footage, which I really like because look at how the image of the baby isn't really changing. And yet, this guy's going crazy. Look, woo, let's, let's look all around the baby. That guy's not a sonographer. Anyway, sometimes I'm accused of not being in the moment, but that's not true. I'm just in a different moment. Like, instead of thinking, wow, I'm seeing my unborn child for the first time, I'm thinking, wow, that machine is amazing. I wonder how it works. And I actually know a little bit about how ultrasound scanning machines work now. What really struck me the last time was the gel that they squeeze onto your belly before they rub the ultrasound wand on it. I remember after the scan, during a, a moment of contemplative silence, uh, Leanne saying, what are you thinking about? And I said, well, I just wonder whether that gel is purely for lubrication or whether it serves some other purpose. So next time we went in, I snuck a look at the bottle the sonographer was dispensing the gel from, and it specifically said ultrasound gel, so it wasn't just a generic lubricant. It turns out that ultrasound gel is specifically formulated to do one job, and that job is acoustic coupling, and it's really interesting, and that's what this video is about. But first of all, what is an ultrasound scan? Well, it's like sonar. So you send out sound waves, they bounce off various things, and you listen out for the reflected waves coming back to you. And you can use the timing to figure out how far away things are. And you can use the direction to figure out where things are. With a sophisticated device like an ultrasound scanner, you can use that information to build up quite a good picture. In the case of a pregnancy scan, it's the baby that the sound waves are bouncing off, specifically the baby's bones. The purpose of the gel is to sonically merge the probe and the human body into a single acoustic entity. And by doing so, it removes unwanted reflections. Think about this. If you stand in front of a wall and scream, like I do for relaxation, you'll hear your scream coming back at you because walls reflect sound. But sound also passes through walls, like this aeroplane. My studio is near City Airport in London, which is annoying. So the question is, how much acoustic energy gets reflected and how much gets transmitted at the interface between two different substances? and why. That's what we need to figure out. And to do that, I've got an analogous wave system. So sound waves are longitudinal, which means the vibrations go in the same direction as the wave is traveling. These waves are transverse, so the oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of wave travel, but the physics is the same. So look, if I lock one of these rods in position, then this is gonna be like a sound wave coming up against a really solid, unmovable wall. And you can see that the wave gets reflected completely. And you can see why. If you look at the rod that's just next to it, as the wave comes in, that rod is pulled upwards. But that creates tension in these two cords here, which pulls the rod back down again. But it actually travels past the origin and goes much lower than it. And that pulls on the rod next to it, which pulls on the rod next to it. And so the wave travels back in the direction it came from. Sound waves don't reflect completely off of walls because walls have a little bit of give and we can simulate that by adding weights to the wave machine. So the heavier rods represent the wall because like the atoms in the wall, they're harder to get moving. In this case, because of inertia. Look what happens when we send an impulse up to the boundary. It's partially reflected and it's partially transmitted. Notice, by the way, that the transmitted wave is traveling slower than the incoming wave. That's not true for sound going from air to wall. Sound actually travels more quickly through the wall. That's because this analogy isn't perfect. If I add even more weights, then even more of the wave is reflected and less is transmitted, which makes sense because we're getting closer to the situation where I was physically holding one of the rods in place. So hopefully you can see that the more different two substances are, the more reflection you get and the less transmission you get. 
When I say more different, I'm actually talking about something called acoustic impedance, which is a measure of how much does a substance resist acoustic motion basically the, the vibration of atoms and molecules that is sound. It's a bit like refractive index when you're dealing with electromagnetic waves, if you're familiar with that. The only difference is that refractive index is the inverse of wave impedance. The human body has an acoustic impedance of about 3000 times that of air. So if you want to work out how much sound that is produced outside the human body ends up inside the human body when it passes through the boundary between the two, you put the two acoustic impedances into this equation and you get out an answer of about 0.1%, so hardly any. And by the way, you get the same problem in reverse. If you go from high acoustic impedance to low acoustic impedance, you get reflection as well. Hopefully you can see that we would expect that intuitively if I show you what happens when you go from some impedance to zero impedance. You see, if I pinch these two cords together, the cord is providing no torque to resist the twisting of that final rod. This final rod actually travels higher than it would normally because it's unimpeded on this side. And so that pulls on the rod next to it and that pulls on the rod next to it. And so you end up with a wave traveling backwards, a reflected wave. So without ultrasound gel, 0.1% of the acoustic energy would find its way into your body. And then 0.1% of that would make its way back out again for the receiver to pick up. 0.1% of 0.1% is one ten thousandth of a percent, completely useless. What ultrasound gel does is remove the boundary between different acoustic impedances. It removes the impedance mismatch. It's formulated to have the same acoustic impedance as the human body so that there's no barrier between the speaker and the inside of the human body and the inside of the human body and the microphone inside the probe. I don't know if speaker or microphone are the right words in this context, but at least you know what I mean. While we're on the subject of ultrasound scans, I want to tell you about a collaboration between art and science that I think is really interesting. It's called Ode to the Future, and it's a collaboration between a musician and people who are yet to be born, and it uses the technology of ultrasound scans. And I just think it's a really interesting kind of artistic way of looking at how curiosity-driven innovation will shape the future. Links in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.